Hello, everyone, and I hope you're doing great today. It's another beautiful day in paradise. Wherever you happen to be, I hope that you're enjoying yourself. And remember this. I want you to always remember this. When it comes to life, no one else has control over your happiness other than you. You control your happiness. So my statement to you is don't worry, be happy. So welcome to today's session. And of course, this is all about leadership as influence. I want you to become a better leader or a good leader and ultimately a leader of influence. And what I'm going to talk about today is going to be centered on what leadership is on the average day of an individual. And some of it will be applied to the personal life as well as some will be applied to the professional or business life as well. So if you're with me, thank you so much. And again, I always like to just share a little bit more about myself. Uh, why don't I talk about education today? And uh, it's something that I've always strived for. It's something that my parents instilled in me. And my, I had a great aunt by the name of Aunt Carrie uh, from Henderson, North Carolina. And she always told me, she said, Paul, education can take you all over the world. And guess what? She was right. She was a teacher for 30 years in our hometown, and she had traveled all over the world. And I, of course, have traveled all over the world in re as a result of not only my speaking, but also with my career in the United States Air Force. So I wanted to share that with you today. But let's get right into it. Let's say on the average day, like today, you woke up and you had some decisions to make. And some of those decisions you make, it includes what? The big pause. It includes leadership. Why? Because we all have a life to lead. We wake up in the morning. We're blessed to be waking up in the morning. And then we have to make a decision. Do we eat breakfast or don't we? Uh, do we prepare to go to work? Do we prepare to go to school? Or if we're in a retired state, uh, what will activities be for today? So there's always something. And if you happen to have children of your own, then it's even more of a leadership that has to take place. So let's say that you're a student, let's say in high school, like my son is, and he has a decision to make. He'll get up and if we don't prepare breakfast for him, he prepares it for himself. I've taught my son how to cook. So that in itself is a, a form of independence. So that's a form of leadership. He has a decision. He's made a decision when, you know, I'm going to have breakfast because when I go to class this morning and I ride on the bus, I need to have my stomach, I need to be nourished so that I have brain food and I'll be able to make my way through the day. And then the next thing, he goes through classes all day and constantly he's having to think. He's taking exams. He's touched base with his peers, his, his classmates. And he's in the 10th grade, by the way, Generation Z at his finest. And then lunchtime comes. He has another decision to make when it comes to food. And then he has some decisions to make. Does he attend a, a, a session that talks about perhaps going to college? Uh, does he take it for the PSAT, uh, for exams, uh, preparing for college? And so there are many, many decisions that he has to make. And then, of course, as the day goes on, he has more classes. He, of course, the previous night turned in his homework assignments, and he's receiving more assignments through the day to pick, take care of for the night and maybe some in the future if he has a, a report to do, a book report or something of that nature, or preparing for an exam. And then he, of course, takes the bus home. He makes it home, and then he makes that decision. He's going to take a shower before he has dinner. We have dinner ready for him. And then he goes right back into the study mode. So he's made a lot of uh, leadership decisions throughout the day, even though he may not be aware of the fact that he's making leadership decisions. And uh, of course, what I always say when it comes to the mind, uh, if we have a well-tuned mind and we can control our mind, then we can typically make better decisions and better decisions ends up in better results. And that's really also a part of leadership. Now, one of the things that my son is going to do, he's going to be a tutor this summer and he'll be helping uh, children to learn how to do math. He's really good at math. So he's gonna be a tutor throughout the summer so he can get his 
his hours, his uh, volunteer hours that he needs for graduation. At my son's high school, just like it was for my daughter, they need 24 hours of volunteer or community service in order to graduate. No community service, no volunteer hours, no graduation. So it really gets the students in, in line in terms of understanding the importance of being a part of the community. So his will be a math tutor for the summer for the younger students who happen to be at the uh, summer camps and, and summer activities uh, in the community. And so let's think about someone who is working. So a person wakes up in the morning, they have a decision to make. Are they feeling good enough to go to work? With COVID-19, things have changed just a little bit. They may very well not have to go to work in the morning. They may have to work home virtually. They may have it set up where they work some days in the office, physically in the office, the brick and mortar facility. And then some days, voila, the computer, the laptop, Google Meetings, Zoom, you name it, just a, a wealth of a multiplicity of different virtual platforms that one can get on, just like the one I'm on right now. And then the person just decide, okay, I'll go into work today. So they have to make the decision. Will I drive all the way to work or will I take public transportation, a bus, or will I take the metro train? And so those decisions have to be, those are leadership decisions. Then once the person gets to work and they happen to be on a team and they're working on a special project, for their organization. And in this particular case, I'll just use the example where the, whereby they are on a production line. And let's say, like I used to work at UPS and they have to go in and they have just a big, big load of trucks that have come in. And just like I used to work, they're cosmetics that are all on this truck in parcels and they have to be unloaded from a 18 wheeler truck. And then it has to go on a conveyor belt to go to different parts of a given state, for example, the state of Maryland. And maybe it goes uh, locally with some of the trucks and then some may go uh, interstate as well, go in, inside the state of Maryland and then outside also. And so they're constantly sorting the packages and then the packages are going to the appropriate uh, vehicle truck that is going to be distributed to and then this process repeats itself over and over throughout the day. And finally, there's time for lunch. If a person has time for lunch, maybe 30 minutes, they'll get their lunch and they go right back at it. And all along, they're on a team. So as a decision maker, as a leader that's on a team, again, at the parcel delivery uh, location, uh, they have to, they are in a leadership position because they have to keep the production line going. They have to actually maximize it, work with the loader of the vehicle. And as the sorter is reporting to the manager, hey, we're on time. We have a truck that's going to be taking out these parcels of, of cosmetics to whatever destination they have. And we only want to deliver that package once. So we have to ensure that employee has to ensure that they get the proper parcel or box on the proper truck so that it leaves on schedule and arrives at the destination to its customers on time. And then he clocks out, either take the Metro or the public bus home, get their vehicle and drive to their home or apartment wherever they happen to live. So again, on the average day, people have many, many leadership decisions to make. And because we all have a life to lead, every one of us, even if you're not employed, you still have to lead your life. You have to make decisions. And it all takes into account different things such as one's character, uh, one's uh, communication skills, one's negotiation skills, uh, one's ability to get along with others, have an empathy in case someone gets hurt. People get hurt on a job every day. So you want to have empathy. You also want to be able to influence other people to stay motivated and stay inspired and stay empowered to do your very best. And then if you ask me, have I ever been a motivational speaker? The answer is yes. <laughs> but self-motivation is also important. So is self-leadership as well. And I've, I've discussed these items on previous videos. So just go back and listen to them and you will understand more of what I'm talking about, especially for you all who are viewing these videos for Leadership is Influenced for the very first time. And again, I'm your host, Paul Lawrence Van. just to remind you, 
in case I didn't mention it in the beginning. However, uh, let's talk to a person who is a manager or supervisor of employees. They start their day off. They're going to get to work a little bit earlier than the employees because it's the right thing to do. They're going to either drive in or they're going to take the metro train in if they happen to have it. And then they're going to get to work. They're going to look at the workflow for the day. Who's assigned? Did everyone report in for work today? or with someone out sick. And then they have to relay this to the uh, human resources officers, to the finance office, because we have to determine whether that person be paid today through actual work or would they be paid as a uh, payment uh, because they're out sick on their sick leave, whatever it happens to be. And then they report that to the leader in the morning meeting with the leader with the title, but the manager is also a leader. So it's, it's incumbent upon them to be the middle person or middle man, a middle woman between the leader with the title and the employees. And so they go along their day and let's say uh, what they have is an acquisition office. So they, they have a procurement office where contracting takes place and uh, they're trying to get this new system on board. So they have to select between five and 10 different contractors, prospective contractors who will actually do the work. And if they can do the work, they would, if they're able to find out if they can do the work within the schedule, within the budget, do they have a, a proper amount of personnel aligned to actually work on the project? Will they be able to provide data that will tell them what to do? And then looking at the overall business performance. And this of course has an impact on the entire community where this company operates. And so as they go through the day, they're making their selection. We call it a source selection. They're selecting which prospective contractor can do the work. They make calls during the day. The team makes calls throughout the day. They uh, bring the financial expert, wah, that would have been me. <laughs> and I come in and I calculate, provide cost estimate, how much each particular prospective contractor uh, it will, will cost to develop the program and they all will be different because all of them, 11 different countries, companies, they all have 11 different uh, approaches to how they will manufacture and produce the, the product or service that one needs. And then this information is relayed to the leader and that information will be coming from the employee leaders. And at the end of the day, uh, they are gonna come up with a decision. And of course, this is an example. And they, they come up with a decision as to who they're going to select. And this is reported in a meeting at the action report. And then the day comes to a close and they will be letting the winning contractor, a company know the following morning who has been selected for this multi-million dollar program, <laughs> sample program, mind you. And, and that individual, again, manager, leader, will be making his way back home, getting some much needed rest as they get prepared for the next day. So let's look at the leader with the title, the one who has the vision and the mission all set up for the entire company, the entire organization, and they will provide oversight uh, and, and talk to the manager leaders and talk to them about what the expectations are and trying to find out is everything on schedule, all employees working, they're coming up, they have good decisions, they have good ideas, who provides the best concept, what about the creativity, what about the innovation? And so this is done throughout the day. And of course, the leader with the title will contact uh, the particular uh, individuals who heads up each company, letting them know, hey, we're getting closer to the goal in this sample in terms of who we're gonna select to develop this program for us and who will receive the funds for it. And that individual, of course, had arrived first during the day, and then he just monitors and, and he really delegates this information to the, the workflow to the manager or supervisor leaders and then down to the employees. And so as the day goes on, he finally receives the information. This is who we're going to select to perform this particular contract for this particular product and the goods and our services. And uh, he closes it out with a meeting with the managers and they prepare for a presentation the next day to discuss who is the winning bidder for the contract. And so that's kind of the average day of a person with leadership. And all along that leader, leader with the title 
has his mission out front. He has his goals out front and he has milestones in which he wants to achieve. And he's influencing the manager leaders and employee leaders throughout the day and throughout the performance of the workflow. And, and that's really uh, just a sample of what happens in the average day. Now, granted, the work you do may very well be different and that's okay, but it will take into account and the overall objective of this session is just letting you know that everyone on that three-legged stool, then the, manage, the leader with the title, the manager leader and the employee leader on that three-legged stool, all are leaders and they all have a job to do on a daily basis. If you start taking this approach each and every day when you're on the job that you're on or who you're employed by, or if you're an entrepreneur, you will get a lot more done because it will increase the productivity. It will increase your sales. And, and the end result is we want high business performance. That equals more revenue. It equals more clients. It equals more business. And that's why leadership impacts every area. I could say the very same thing for someone who is an, a professional athlete or a college athlete or a high school student athlete. I could say the same thing. I could say the same thing for a teacher or a professor. I could say the exact same thing for someone who's in oil and gas in the business I used to be in with mobile oil company. I could tell you someone who's in the Air Force, how that works, or in any other part of the military, part of the defense, a federal employee. I could actually tell you that when you approach life and life is leadership, you are on your way. You are going to be an asset that is going to give you a competitive advantage, not only over your peers who don't participate like this, but also within your industry. And I think to me, this is one of the most important things to do. It will afford you that opportunity to make uh, better choices and have more options at your disposal in terms of uh, perhaps um, increase in pay, uh, looking at upward mobility, ultimately become, if you're an employee leader, becoming a manager or supervisor leader, and ultimately uh, perhaps becoming the leader with the overall title, the CEO, the president, the executive vice president, what, whatever it happens to be, our executive director, our commander, whatever it happens to be, but uh, you want to understand that you are a leader. I salute you. That's my best Air Force salute, by the way. And uh, I just wanted to share this with you today because I'm all about leadership. Now, am I a fun person to be around? I absolutely am. <laughs> I really enjoy life. And this just happens to be my strength of which I've been actually working since the age of 10. So I have a lot of years of experience uh, behind my, myself. And um, I just celebrated my anniversary for college graduation yesterday. And I'll just say it's many, many moons and many, many sunrises. Uh, many times I've, I've circled the, uh, the earth and, and circling the sun. And uh, all of this is coming to bear, but I think more than anything, what I realize is that over the course of my life, it has always been about leadership because leadership does take into consideration the activities that you participate in every day, the decisions that you have to make and collaborations and, and different uh, teams and organizations that you're with throughout life. And, and I believe that um, we all are leaders. And uh, we don't have to have the official leader title to be a leader. We're employee leaders, we're supervisory leaders and manager leaders. And of course, we're all a part of that three-legged stool. And that's my three-legged stool leadership concept that I talk about. And so I just wanted to share this with you today. And it was so much fun. So I share a little bit about my son and his average day. I share a little bit about being an employee leader and what the average day is like, the manager leader and what the average day is like, and then the leader with the title, what their average day may very well be like. And we know that since this is just a little scenario or sample of what I gave you, you can actually apply this to your daily life. You actually can, if you so choose. You don't have to, but if you want to stay ahead 
uh, you may want to give it some consideration. And like I've always said from the very first video, if that you want to touch base with me, you can do so. Just go to info at paulvanspeaks.com. But I also have my link here. Uh, I have a link tree. It's https colon forward slash forward slash link I <laughs> L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Paul Lawrence fan. Now, my English teacher would really get on me about, mis about the misspeller word, but I provided it to you any anyhow. But I just want uh, overall my goal for you and what I want for you. And yes, I want something for you. I want you to become the best leader that you can be. Is that that's good? I also want you to become a leader of influence. And a leader of influence is a person who develop other leaders along the way, members of the staff, members of the team, members of the company. If you're an entrepreneur, uh, you're business partners. Everyone become a leader because you build up more equity in terms of your knowledge, your wisdom, skills, and abilities. And so my time is up and I thank you for yours. Feel free to leave comments uh, within uh, this channel, leadership, Paul, Paul Lawrence Van, Leadership is Influence, and have your family, friends, colleagues, peers, uh, and family, of course, to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I would love to connect with you. And again, I do provide speeches on leadership. I also deliver leadership development workshops for corporations. I also am a leadership coach. I can coach you one-on-one -on -one or group coaching. And I also have digital courses. And of course, I, I shared with you recently a book I have coming out. And what is the title? Leadership is Influence. It's going to be a great book. I've probably read it a hundred times because I'm looking over the editing and the sentence structure and the chapters. But it's going to be a really great book. You'll be seeing me everywhere. I'm going to be on television, social media, radio, podcast, you name it. I'll be all over and all over the world for that, that matter. But uh, thank you so much. I'll see you on the very next episode of Leadership as Influence. Have a great day. And I hope that you took something, one thing, one tidbit uh, from what I shared today. And if you did, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.